Hey everyone, it's Wayne Carini from Chasing Classic Cars. I'm sitting in the George Barris, Sam Barris, Hirohata Mercury today. One of the most fabulous um, and the most famous customized cars in the world. This car was customized in 1952 to 1953 by the Barris brothers in Los Angeles to compete in the Motorama that was put on by Peterson Magazine. And it won in 1953 the Motorama. I mean this was the custom car everybody else was chasing all these different ideas so we're gonna start and explain the car a little bit um, we're sitting in a car that they really didn't change the dashboard that much but they put these beautiful knobs on here which Bob Hirahata actually had made uh, which include the colors of the car with those green colors in the in the off-white the the dashboard if you'll see was striped by Von Dutch, the most famous striper in the world, and the intricacy of, of the stripe is unbelievable. And, and someone hopefully someday be able to see Von Dutch's signature is so tiny you can barely see it. It's a three on the tree, so three speeds on the column, and then overdrive in second and third gear, which gives it that extra cruising speeds that, that are needed. Uh, Bob Hirohata drove this car across the country in 1954 and 55 and went to different car shows. So I'm going to push this button over here on the dash and that releases the solenoid which is unlocks the door so I can get out of the car. There's three solenoids here. One is for this door, the other one is for the right door, and this one down at the bottom is for the trunk. That releases the solenoid, pulls the latch, and the door uh, or trunk opens. I'm, I'm sort of crawling out of the car. You can see I'm kind of short, but my head is hitting unless I duck it. That's because on this car, what they did is they chopped the roof. So they took seven inches out of the back of this roof and dropped it down. They took four inches out of the front and they dropped it down. What is so unique about this, though, and that's not an easy process because there's a lot of thought process that goes into lowering a roof they used the original glass so what they did is they basically just laid the glass forward and so that glass normally would have been up to about here but they laid it forward and you can't see a seam you can't see anything on this car that shows how it was done any imperfections they also this line would have come up to here they lowered the line they brought it down here they put these beautiful scoops in the side and this was a trim piece off of a Buick. And they put that on the bottom and made that beautiful swoop. So this car, and if we were to put the windows down, which we should, um, but this here, this would have been square. The bottoms of the doors were square. They rounded everything out. And you can see by this, this car is sort of in motion, just sitting still with this beautiful scoop. This actually follows the same line as that. And all these modifications were done without CAD drawings, without any type of, of anything being drawn on paper. It just was in their minds what to do. You know, they would maybe sketch something real quick, but now cars are designed on, on computers and CAD machines and stuff. It's, it's unbelievable. So, so we have um, Lincoln Capri taillights in the back. These are Frenched in, and Frenched meant that they actually sunk into the body. They weren't attached to the body. They became part of the shape of the car. So you've got this line that comes down here, and then it goes here, and it follows all the way down here. So you see that, that line that goes all the way up, all the way from the bumper up. Um, they cut these holes in the bottom so the exhaust tips could come out. Um, they stretch this in the back so that it would include these tail lights and they also form fit this trunk lid so that you can't it, the trunk lid usually would lay on here but this is all formed into the car so with that 331 caddy in there it makes a beautiful rumbling sound we'll move to the front One of the things, too, is, is if you look at the chop, so the chop really looks low. The windows were cut. So these are original vent windows, but they cut the glass. They cut the windows. Everything was formed to the shape of the car. But if we really stand back and look at the car, 
the w roof is low, but if the car was sitting at its normal height, it would sort of look a little strange. So normally today what we would do is we would put airbags in all four corners of these cars and then we would lower it and we would raise it. There was no such thing as airbags back then. So what we what they did is they cut the actual springs in the front and then they cut the frame so the leaf spring in the back would drop down and so the frame was actually cut and if you look at it it's absolutely perfectly horizontal and level. Very difficult thing to do when you're building a car is to get that look the first time out of the box and they did it on this car. Another thing that that they did is they put these Appleton spotlights. Now Appleton spotlights were the, th the thing everybody wanted. They wanted Appletons on their car. So twin Appleton spotlights. You'll also notice that the windshield, now they had to cut the windshield. These are two pieces of glass with a split in the window in the middle. And it, and it follows the line of the hood right up to the glass and right up in, and blends into the roof of the car. They stretched this in the front these came out four inches in the front and then instead of the headlight trim ring laying outside it's Frenched in again into the front they made these these little uh, grills for the uh, parking lights and the signal lights and made the lenses and this was the first time in any car that they made what was called the floating grill there's nothing here nothing here holding the grill just basically how it's attached here in the back so it was called the floating grill which was made of three grills out of a 1950 Ford um, you'll notice they moved out the front headlights but they had to do the same with the hood so this is an important part of the car where normally that hood would have stopped right about here but in order to follow that form in the front they had to raise this out. Now this is a very important fact with the car because this is basically made out of lead. And the lead is so heavy, it's a very, very heavy hood. And that's where the word or the, the name lead sled came from. There was so much lead made into these cars and they were so heavy that they were called lead sleds. So we've got a wonderful car. This 331 Caddy. So this car came normally with a flathead Ford engine in it, or flathead Mercury. And they didn't have much power and they were known for overheating. So Bob Hirohata, after winning the Motorama with this car in 1953, decided that he'd like to go across the country and win other shows. So he had a 331 Cadillac engine, which was the engine to use during that period of time to, to uh, power the car and then they put three Stromberg carburetors on the top to make sure there was enough gasoline getting in to make that car move along the highway. Of course not too many highways so Bob had to uh, drive the car on all back roads going across the country. He won every show that he went to when he started on the East Coast and moved out uh, to come back to California. Now this car eventually uh, Bob sold the car, it went into disrepair, it was owned by several people over the years and it was in an accident where it got uh, dented down the left side of the car. It was fixed and it was, it was in a B movie um, and it was painted brown and gold at that time. And it was uh, Mimi Van Doren was the, uh, was the actress that was in the movie. So what happened is this car was in disrepair. It was on a used car lot in Los Angeles in 1959. And Jim McNeil saw this car in 1959 on the used car lot and recognized it from Hot Rod Magazine and Hop Up Magazine. And he bought it. And over the years, it sat in his garage in disrepair. And in 2009, with a bunch of his friends, they restored the car to this beautiful car we see today, which is an exact, exact paint match and exactly the way it was when Barris Brothers finished the car. The car was brought to Pebble Beach in 2015 where it won its class. And that's where I met Mr. McNeil and um, he asked me to help his family sell the car um, on his passing. Uh, Mr. McNeil unfortunately passed in 2018 and here we are today representing 
the family selling this beautiful Bob Hirahata uh, Bears Brothers car. The color was something that no one ever saw back in that day. It was, it was such a great color combination of the two-tone green, mint green with a dark green. Basically every other one was, was maroon or black, but they wanted to make a statement. We've got Cadillac hubcaps on, which was a period correct hot rod thing to do. The fender skirts in the back, which are form-fitted into the car. There's so many detail things on the car that it really makes a statement. So this is it, the Hirahata Mercury. Wayne, thank you. you you've done a wonderful presentation, and, and, and we want to thank you. But Tech Force has been involved with trying to recruit students to get into the auto tech industry. What would you tell an auto tech student today? He said, hey, do this. You know, um, one of the things that people ask me is, how do I get into the automobile industry? Do what's, what you're passionate about. You know, do exactly is, is what's, what's in, not what maybe your uncle or your father or your cousin thinks that you should do. Do what you're passionate about. And everything will sort of fall into place. Make sure you go out to car shows, meet as many people as you can. But this car was conceived with a dream. And those dreams can make things come true. And, and it did it for me. Um, I'm, I'm here telling you that it can work. Um, my dad restored cars for a living when I was growing up. I worked in his shop every day. I thought I'd never be in the, in the business, but once it gets in your blood and, and, it, and it's in you and you love cars, there's no turning back. Um, and then I was lucky enough to, to be able to get a TV show and share my experiences with people. So uh, just follow your dreams mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and make sure, but be the best in whatever you can every you're doing no matter if you're repairing cars or you're a technician in a shop or you're customizing a car just be the best you can there's a dearth of talent out there do you see that in your shop that you you're trying to get more people to come in and is it hard to find the talent it's really difficult to find but boy I tell you what with with all these technical schools and and colleges that are out there there's there's courses for every type of a person that wants to be a mechanic that wants to be a designer that wants to be a customizer it's following your dream mm -hmm. and and there's hardly anybody getting into the field right now so it's a golden opportunity for young people to get in the field look at look at this auction here the, the, the Mecham auction to be part of this alone is, is an unbelievable experience so if you have the opportunity to, to volunteer at car shows to volunteer at a Mecham auction to, to give your time maybe it, it go into a shop and learning from people mm -hmm. it's the way to go right. Okay. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful. Tech Force and Mika Malkin has partnered with us to add Wayne Carini to that partnership. It's huge because, you, yes, you have a voice, but you have a reputation. And we're, 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 we're honored to be a part of that. And thank you for sharing your wisdom with the students today. Well, I tell you what, you guys can do it. So get out there, do it. And, and we're going to have a Zoom call soon. We'll, we'll be able to talk in person. So um, enjoy yourselves today. And thank you for watching and understanding what the, the Hirahata Mercury is all about.